This news update is brought to you by. This is how we roll. Oh, the offers are quite exciting, and the prices will leave you smiling. Everybody's got a chance to blow. Get the new Samsung J5 plus one gig free data, starting at just three hundred forty-five dollars. This is the Barbados Today afternoon news update for Thursday, December 17. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. Canadian energy firm Deltro is warning that Barbados's economy could be impacted if the island does not get serious about weaning itself off fossil fuels. Deltro is planning to establish a $26 million solar manufacturing plant here by next year, and they say it will be able to provide individuals and commercial entities with affordable electricity. Director Dean Del Mastro says the company will also manufacture solar photovoltaic systems. Barbados is a prime example of an economy that can benefit dramatically from what we do. Um, the price of electricity here is high uh, and it's only going to go higher. Uh, oil is at a near record low, it's at a, like a three decade low uh, in price right now uh, if you uh, adjust for inflation. Uh, and still everyone we meet tells us about the high cost of energy here in Barbados. Uh, and frankly, it's crippling your economy. Right? It's, it's hurting everyday people uh, that, you know, that may not have as much money to, to spend on other goods or, or to, to spend otherwise uh, with their families. Deltro says among the reasons for setting up here were the island's location, political structure, banking and trade laws, and membership in the regional grouping CARICOM. Delmastro noted that the company will not receive government funding, but he says it does qualify for tax concessions. The government of Barbados is not putting any money uh, into the plant whatsoever. Uh, what they did do was provide us uh, with a window uh, for tax-free status, uh, which will allow us to get uh, kind of up and running and, uh, and profitable. So uh, that's, that's obviously key. Uh, we want to be... We want to be here long term uh, and uh, creating, uh, uh, we want to create good jobs uh, and skills uh, here and invest into the people and um, so it was a good fit uh, with, uh, with the government's objectives. There are more calls today for the public to stop unauthorized dumping of garbage across the island. The call came from the acting head of the Sanitation Service Authority, Rosalind Knight, following a cleanup at Bucks St. Thomas this morning. Figures from the SSA show that 171 tons of garbage was removed from the area between September and November this year. Meanwhile, the General Manager of Quality Business Services, Ernest King, is to meet with Rosalind Knight today to discuss the issue of unauthorized dumping at Bucks. The meeting comes after garbage picked up by King's company was dumped at the site. Your issue with a uh, certificate that has all your information on it. It carries the registration number, the weight of the vehicle, the tonnage the truck carries, which also helps establish your charge. So if you have two tons, you know that is two tickets, which is $50. That weight certificate now that your issued with is taken back to your employer, which he can, that employer can do his checks and balances to show him whether his operator went across the scale and what the cost of the tonnage that uh, went across the scale. So, I mean, there's really no excuse for any of uh, any caller that has people operating for him because their checks and balances. Not only that, the tickets are issued in triplicate. King has already said he was not personally responsible for the dumping, but he has, and he has pointed out to one of his employees. He says he is determined to get to the bottom of the situation. Education Minister Ronald Jones had to part with $1,000 this week after he appeared in the District B Magistrates Court on two traffic offenses. Jones was charged after police were summoned to the scene of an accident at Lowlands Junction, Christchurch, earlier this year. He pleaded guilty to driving without due care and attention and was hit with a $750 fine and a further $250 for driving with an expired driver's license. There's regional and international news after this short break. It was days before Christmas, I had so much to do, shopping, more shopping, and I was feeling blue. There's a mother, a father, a wifey, and friend. Lots of things to buy, but 
there was no money to spend. Ah, I found the answer. The BT shopping spree. 15,000 in goodies, free, free, free. It's easy to enter, nothing hard to do. Follow my instructions and a winner can be you. Visit facebook.com backslash Barbados today. Do it quickly and fill out your form to enter this spree. Look, I'm shopping at the cost you less mega store. Come down, fill your trolleys with goodies and more. And like me, you two can say, ho, ho, ho. Secure your future, be financially strong. From the region, CARICOM Secretary General Erwin Larocque says there is a lot more to be done to address the effects of climate change in the region. Larocque hailed the historic Paris Agreement, which was adopted at this year's climate change conference last weekend, but he says the work is just beginning. We need to ratchet up our capacity both at the regional level and at the national level. If we're seeing that there's resources that need to be made available to us, we have to be able to access those resources. We have to be able to uh, take steps towards adaptation, take steps uh, towards mitigation, and the, and the mitigation from for us, uh, renewable energy is a critical part of it, um, and there's going to be a lot of, of investment required in the area of renewable energy. I mentioned Red Plus, which is another mitigation effort, and on the adaptation side, lots needs to be done to adapt our our, our entire um, countries in, in terms of, of the onslaught of climate change, and the resources need to be made available by developed countries. But we must also be able to uh, have the capacity to prepare for those, whether it's in terms of preparing projects or, or the, in terms of engineering. It's a whole slew of areas that we need to work together collectively. Haiti has received a 42 million U.S. dollar grant from the Inter-American Development Bank to help improve natural disaster mitigation. The bank says the funds will seek to increase the country's ability to adapt to climate change and risk management in the agriculture sector, as well as improve water conservation and reduce risk of rural economic losses due to floods. The IDB says Haiti is one of the countries with the highest natural disaster risk index in the world. On the international scene, a French court has ordered the International Monetary Fund's chief, Christine Lagarde, to stand trial for her role in the payout of 400 million euros to a businessman. Lagarde was the country's finance minister at the time the payout was ordered. In September, France's main prosecutor recommended that magistrates drop their investigation into Lagarde for the alleged negligence with regards to the affair. And finally, the ongoing migrant crisis will be high on the agenda of a two-day summit of European states in Brussels, which begins today. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says it is an historic test for Europe. The BBC has been looking back at what some have dubbed the year of the migrant in Europe. This mountain of memories on the Greek island of Lesbos resonates with tales of hundreds of thousands of men, women and children the owners of these jackets, who wore them in fear and hope across the sea to Europe this year, dramatically changing their lives. You're welcome. And also making a lasting impact on the people and the places in Europe they came across along their journey. One evening I looked up and 42 boats I counted coming at me. It was like the Armada coming at me. There's a lot of images you won't forget. You know, you don't forget children, dead children. Eric Kemsen lives on Lesbos. He hit the headlines this year by spearheading a migrant rescue mission with no help from the Greek authorities. I spoke to my wife and I said, I think we're going to have one hell of a year, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it just escalated from there, you know. It's, uh, but no one could have imagined that. It just, and I think next year is going to be even worse. Are you ready? No, you're never ready for this, never. But uh, we Is do what Europe we can. Ready? <laughs> Europe's just a joke. It's a joke. There's been no European Union in this migrant crisis so far. Each country has reacted differently. 
And that's the news. There's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.tv. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marika Williams. Good afternoon. Thank you.